The B1 battle droid was one of the most prolific droid models in the history of the galaxy thanks to the sheer number of them the CIS droid army employed during the Clone Wars. These skeletal horde soldiers were pretty pathetic on their own, but they were usually deployed in borderline unstoppable numbers which made them a force to be reckoned with. In a recent video on the B1 battle droid and why it was underrated, we mentioned that one of the droid's strengths was the adaptability of its model. With additional programming and some new equipment, B1s could serve in a wide variety of different roles. In this video, we're going to be looking at all of these B1 variants. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Variants on the B1 model originated with the OOM series battle droids. Several specialist models produced alongside the B1s by Bactoid Combat Automata. Originally, OOM series had three different droid models. The OOM Security Battle Droid, the OOM Pilot Battle Droid, and the OOM Command Battle Droid. But as Bactoid began preparing for the Clone Wars, it began adding variants to the OOM line and to the B1 line as well. During the war, these adaptable droids could be found serving in virtually every role imaginable in the CIS droid army, from marines and snipers to engineers and firefighters. Let's look at the classic variants first, the OOM droids. Distinguished from other droid models by blue torso markings, OOM pilot battle droids served as crew members, pilots, mechanics, and saboteurs. Their specialized programming allowed them to easily figure out the control systems for most vehicles, and they had great stores of technical knowledge as well. Armies of them filled virtually every crew position aboard Separatist warships, and they were also responsible for piloting shuttlecraft, tanks, troop transports, and more. Despite their non-combatant role, pilot droids retained their combat programming, which allowed them to defend themselves if their vehicles were boarded. They were usually lightly equipped, if equipped at all. Many didn't carry weapons, and those that did largely used SE-14 blaster pistols instead of E-5 blaster rifles. Additionally, pilot units weren't equipped with signal booster backpacks, as they simply weren't necessary. OOM security battle droids featured distinctive red markings on their torsos and heads, and were tasked with patrolling the interiors of separatist installations. Of the OOM models, these droids were the closest to the standard B1s, except their programming was slightly more specialized and they were slightly more independent. They were most commonly seen aboard warships as their specialized programming made them more useful as guards than regular B1s. Like pilot droids, OOM security droids didn't feature signal booster backpacks, but they were otherwise just as well equipped as B1s. OOM command battle droids were originally the most advanced of the B1 variants. Distinguished by yellow markings on their torsos, backpacks, and heads, command droids served as officers aboard warships or with ground units, filling a wide variety of command roles. They were capable of independent tactical decision making and strategic thought, and while they couldn't compare to the dedicated tactical units fielded during the Clone Wars, they were capable of formulating battle plans on their own. Well, I guess I'm in charge now. Before the Battle of Naboo, Command droids were the only units in the Trade Federation droid army that had their own droid brains, and thus a degree of independence from the central control computer. Now, onto some more specific droid variants. There were quite a few unique versions of the B1 that the Trade Federation deployed in small numbers during the Battle of Naboo, which weren't seen elsewhere. These included the remaining battle droid betas, the prototypes on which the B1s were based, as well as beetle droids, which carried flamethrowers and rode domesticated beetles into battle. These odd units were deployed against the Gungans by Commander OOM9 during the early stages of the occupation, with hopes that they would prove useful in Naboo's swamps. Flame battle droids, which featured orange markings and carried flamethrowers, were deployed on Naboo as well. Another Trade Federation variant was the B1 Grapple Droid, a grey armoured model that featured lightsaber resistant claws instead of hands. During the Battle of Naboo, B1 Grapple Droids were deployed in an attempt to stop Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. They proved ineffective, however, so the Confederacy ended up replacing them with the more powerful B2 Grapple Droids. The Trade Federation also deployed a handful of Plasma Droids, hulking 3 meter tall units loosely based on the B1 which had plasma cannons built into their arms. 
Plasma droids were designed to disrupt enemy infrastructure and were seen in pairs in Theed. All of these early variants disappeared by the time of the Clone Wars, but they were replaced by many more specialist units when the war broke out. Many of these were just variants of earlier specializations, like the AAT driver battle droid, which was presumably based on the OOM pilot battle droid. AAT drivers were painted with green markings, which were also sometimes sported by B1 units fighting on jungle worlds. These droids appeared to specialize in driving AATs and were able to serve as tank commanders, a role that had previously been reserved for OOM commander droids. A few other B1 specialists followed the same pattern as the AAT drivers. They were intended to fill a specific niche within broader combat roles that they were already specialists for. The Heavy Battle Droid and the Recon Battle Droid were examples of specialists that took over roles regular B1s had previously filled. Heavies were frontline units with slightly better armor and weapons, while Recon Droids were just better at scouting. A variant of the Droid Commander, the B1 Supervisor Droid, was intended to basically be a dollar store version of the Tactical Droid, which improved on the strategic capabilities of their OOM series predecessors. Some B1 variants were trained to use special equipment types or to fill battlefield roles that ordinary B1s just weren't equipped for. One variant in this category was the Grenadier Battle Droid, which featured green markings and, well, threw a lot of grenades. Grenadiers had their own sub-variants, the Grenadier Trooper and the Grenadier Assault, which featured better armor and smarter programming, respectively. These droids were often deployed in pitched battles where the excessive use of grenades could prove useful. Though, as you may expect, Grenadier droids often shredded about as many droids as they did clones in practice. Assault battle droids and battle droid assassins were among the most effective B1 variants. Assault droids were programmed for the use of heavy weapons, particularly rocket launchers and mines. They featured a few sub-variants of their own, including anti-air battle droids, and they were quite effective at taking down enemy vehicles during the Clone Wars. Battle droid assassins, on the other hand, were snipers, equipped with E5 rifles and programmed for incredible accuracy. Both were more effective than your standard B1s, but both were also pretty rare. As Separatist commanders preferred the B2 HA to the assault droid, and battle droid assassins were expensive to produce. B1 combat engineers and marines were even less common. Known for carrying shotguns for self-defense, combat engineers were programmed to repair vehicles and sometimes even other units during combat. But due to the disposable nature of the droid army, few commanders in the Confederacy considered this a useful specialization, so they were rarely seen. Marines were a B1 specialization programmed to participate in ship-to-ship -ship boarding actions, but very few actually saw service, as B2 super battle droids and BX droid commandos tended to be more useful in such circumstances. Painted orange and grey, and equipped with floodlights, jetpacks, and fusion cutters, rocket battle droids were designed to operate in space. They were next to never seen in combat, but they were frequently deployed by Separatist warships after naval battles as pod hunters. General Grievous particularly enjoyed sending rocket battle droids after enemy escape pods, which the droids would crack open with their fusion cutters, venting any passengers into space. In combat, they used their jetpacks for added maneuverability, and they likely used their fusion cutters alongside their blaster rifles as weapons. Not all droid specializations were for combat, however. Some B1 battle droids were modified to serve in non-combatant roles, such as firefighter droids. As seen aboard the battleship Malevolence, firefighter droids were tasked with extinguishing fires and mitigating damage to warships during combat. Presumably, they were employed on most of the larger ships in the Confederate Navy, but probably not all of them, as some Separatist warships were considered disposable assets. It's likely that the other utility variants of the B1 existed as well, though we never saw any of them on screen. As the Clone Wars came to a close, one final variant of the B1 battle droid was developed, the B1A air battle droid. These droids were hybrids of the B1 and B2 models, equipped with heavier armor, repulsive packs, wrist-mounted blasters, a pair of blades, and for some models, even energy shields. The B1A was designed for increased maneuverability, which it was hoped would make it a challenge for even Jedi to take down. These hopes were, of course, in vain. As clones quickly discovered, 
B1As had weak points on their repulsor packs, which, if hit, would send them spiraling out of control. Nonetheless, B1As were not to be underestimated, and they were by far the toughest variant of the B1 battle droid ever designed. So those were all the variants of the B1 battle droid in the Star Wars universe, from both Legends and Canon. But what do you think? Would you like us to take a look at all the variants of the B2 super battle droid next? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you run off to those suggestive videos guys, make sure you check out our all new channel, The Braved, where we post high quality content on a weekly basis that goes through all the eras of human history to handpick some of the most badass men and women existing in those eras. So if that sounds like it tickles your fancy, that's the first link in the description below. And if you just want to listen to some music, check out our Relax Jack channel, where we use a lot of the music posted there on the videos on this channel. And if you want access to exclusive content and a behind the scenes Discord where you can chat to myself and the team who make these videos, consider donating to the Patreon. And lastly, if you want to join our wider community, check us out and our Geatsleys Discord and our up and coming Geatsleys gaming network with our new Clone Wars roleplay server opening near the end of March. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.